Howdy Embers and welcome back to the corner. My name is Heron and welcome back to The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword. In the last episode, we re-met up with Gorko, uh, discovered uh, that goddess cubes are littered throughout the land, and we started the Skyview Temple. Let's go ahead and continue moving on with that. Alrighty. So this room has a lot... Well, it, it looks like there's a lot to do. There's actually not a whole lot. So, biggest thing we have... Well... Let's let the game show it off. Right, that was kind of pointless. Um, but as you see here, we have no way of getting that ruby. We have uh, we don't have a really good way of getting that gem. Um, but let's go ahead and look around for a second. Hmm. Well, let's take advantage of the one thing we can do right now, which is going after this gemstone. Alrighty, here we go. Well, this looks interesting. Because it is! It's mini boss time! This is the wrong button. This is a Stalfos. We're not going to see a whole lot of these throughout the game, but essentially think of them as a slow, bulky bokoblin that has two swords. Yep, so, this skeleton soldier is born of the dead. In its previous life, it was an ordinary knight, but undeath has improved its combat abilities. It is possible to overpower it with a well-timed shield bash during, this, uh, during the creature's attack. All right, so, yep, this kind of goes into the lore of Zelda a little bit. Uh, it speaks that it used to be a knight. Well, all I'm gonna say is, uh, is Gygus has some, uh, is going to explain a little bit of the lore in uh, in Twilight Princess when we get to this. So this will be very very far down the line. But let's go ahead and move on with this fight, shall we? Right. So that's what happens. All right. So the goal here is to slash where his swords aren't blocking. There we go. Didn't do too bad there. <laughs> All right, but as you saw, uh, up in my top left uh, corner over here, my shield meter, uh, that's what happens when you get hit and you just use your shield for normal de defense as opposed to using it with the bash. So, you gotta be a little careful with that. Anyway, let's figure out what's in this chest. You got the beetle! This is a very interesting uh, interesting item. Essentially, using uh, gyro controls with the Joy-Con, what we're going to be doing is uh, we can remotely pilot it with the Joy-Cons. So when we launch it, how we pilot it is very much uh, reminiscent of a Wii remote because of the motion controls. So what we can do is uh, if we press uh, what we have to do is we have to go over here, we have to hit the gemstone, and then, well. Exactly. <laughs> it unlocks the gate, and we can go right back out. Alrighty, so now that we have this item, everything in this room became accessible to us. So what we're going to do first is we're going to go through, and we're going to go ahead and... Uh, do a little bit of a, of a montage as we get everything in this room. And there's a lot, so here we go. Provided I can uh, not screw this up. Alrighty. Come on. And... Yep, that's what happens when you just hit it. Oh, wrong button. Ah! Come on. Oh, nope. I recentered. No, I recalibrated. Okay, this should not be as hard as I'm making it. There we go. And calm. Activate montage. Hmm. <laughs> 
<laughs> Alright, in all seriousness, I'm not gonna make this uh be a montage. I think I'm just gonna talk a little bit about a couple things. So come on, give us some monster claws! Okay. Skull! Aw oh, man, come on. Why you gotta give me money? Alrighty. Well, anyway, uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, just some uh, some Zelda lore. Uh, and, uh, well, we just recorded a very, very special video. Uh, sorry, I don't know where Zelda lore came from. Um, as far as the channel is concerned, we just recorded a very, very special video for, uh, for y'all. And it will be going up on, uh, well, at the time uh, you're seeing this, it will have already been up. But, uh... Yep, we have a, uh, we have a, uh, we have, we have broken 50 subs. We've already hit our next milestone with everything, which is just incredible to us. So thank you guys so much for everything. And, uh, it truly does mean a lot. Um, uh, and I mean, just as Gygus said in his, uh, his most recent episode of Pal World, there is, uh, there are no words. Uh, with with everything that's been happening so far, so just thank you. Uh, going back into uh, being horrible at this game. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Uh, going back to. Uh, sorry. I need. I, I'm keep losing my train of thought. Uh, going back to Zelda. Uh, there is a lot of lore in place that uh, this game doesn't really go into. Um, a lot of the lore is told in the next couple of Zelda games, um, be it Ocarina of Time, for one, is a huge one, uh, along with A Link to the Past, which are both games that we'll be tackling on, uh, very, very, uh, very, very soon. Uh, I shouldn't say very, very soon, but in the, in the near future, because eventually Skyward Sword will have to end, but I'm talking, I'm talking a little far in the future, so, uh, sorry, I... I can't figure out a good train of thought, and I do apologize for that. Uh, a lot of energy was just uh, was just put into the uh, the video that we just made, so uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Hey, look, a fairy! We can actually catch this one. And fairy in a bottle. Automatically run out of hearts, so now we have essentially an extra life. Alrighty, and we have this. Let's keep moving forward. Excuse me! Yep, unfortunately, enemies can still attack you. Even when you are piloting the beetle. So, try to keep, uh, make sure that you do take care of your enemies before, uh, before doing, uh, the remote piloting here. Bah! Aha! Let's go, and we'll get this one next, and we're just about to finish our lap. Come here. Come here. Come here, Keese. I see you. Come on. Come on. Booyah! Ooh, two for the price of one! Still no Monster Claw! Jeez! Alright, well, let's go ahead and get this Ruby over here. Ruby, sorry. Go up. Yaw. <laughs> Alrighty. Alright, that should be everything on the outer wall. So let's go ahead and let's take care of this sculpture. As you can see, we've got some bars up here as well. So there is one more thing we got to get in this room before we can move on. What is that, you may ask? Well, let's go ahead and let's go circle back just a little bit. There is a cell right here. 
What is in the cell, you may ask? Well, it's a piece of heart. So how do we tackle this? Well, there's a little alcove right up here at the top of uh, of this uh, this big old urn here in the center. So what we gotta do is we gotta be very, very careful because we can run out of stamina very, very quickly. But we just gotta hit this gemstone and piece of heart obtained. Well, sorry, hang on. Now piece of heart obtained. That's number two. Alrighty. Let's go ahead and take a look at our map. Alrighty, so that's where we need to go. But what we want to do first is we want to go to the left. Let's go ahead and take a look over here. And down. Alrighty. I'm trying to remember what this room is. I'm also a little scatterbrained because I haven't had a whole lot of time to prep the recordings for this, so I'm kind of flying by the seat of my pants with these uh, with these next two episodes, so I do apologize for that. I will plan better. Um, alrighty. Oh, that's right. I gotta do this. Here we go. Okay. So, beetle. We'll fly through here. We just gotta hit this gemstone. And... Shaboom! This will raise the water level. Now, well, we, we, we just set up a backtrack for us. We still need to go through this room here. <laughs> My bad. Got ahead. Got ahead of myself. Alrighty. Go to that. And that is how you're supposed to take care of them. Booyah. Now, even though our exit has been uh, unlocked, we still have things we've got to do. So let's go ahead and let's knock down these boxes here. Nothing in that one. Although, that one looks a little bit more durable. And it looks like it's hinting at a block puzzle. So what is this puzzle you might ask? Well, this is the first time we have three of these eyes. If you notice, no matter how close we are to the statue, uh, to the eyes, we can't actually activate that third one. So what we have to do is we gotta go up here and we gotta push the block down so we have something to stand on. Kind of an interesting puzzle. That's why I said kind of, uh, sorry. I, I didn't say a thing and I just continued my train of thought outside of my brain. So that was probably just pure insanity right there. <laughs> Alrighty, just making sure I didn't miss anything up here. But let's go ahead and pull this back. We need to set it up so that way we can activate, uh, well, we can open all three eyes. So how do we do that? Well, we want to get it into the center about the place where we were standing when we activated both of the eyes. So let's see, both of the eyes were activated about here. So we push it forward. And a little to the, little, to the right. We should be perfect. Booyah. And now we just make him dizzy. There we go. Da -da -da -do. And there's that small key that we needed to go to the other direction of this. Huh. Well, let's go back. Then. Alrighty. Well, as you saw there, there is a little bit of swimming capabilities. We're not going to be able to do anything with that for a while, but... Because uh, we don't really have a good way of uh, free maneuvering in the, uh, uh, well, a free maneuvering in the, uh, in the water yet. Which we will be able to do eventually, but we just can't do it now. Alrighty. We're going to go ahead and we're going to switch our slingshot here. There we go. And he died. Yay. 
That makes things easier. <laughs> Alrighty. Let's go ahead and keep moving forward here. Shouldn't be anything else in this room. But... Yeah, we should be okay. Alright. And we're right back where we started. Yay! Oh man, I love it when the other monitor turns off. The other monitor is also my timer, so I currently have no way of knowing how long I've recorded for. Wee! Are we going? Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. And there we go. That's what we're looking for. All right. And goodbye. That was a little morbid. Jeez. Come on. There we go. This one now. Oh, nope, no, 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 no. Back up, back up. Okay. Come on. Come on. Why are you not angling? Okay. Camera, work with me here. Alrighty, well, I guess I can go ahead and show you guys how uh, another way of taking care of these type of bombs is. If we just aim for their, uh, their vines, we can just clip them off like that. Now, let's go ahead and go down here. Say hello to this Quadra Baba. Ah, he tricked me. Come on. Booyah. And Jelly Blob. And boom. Sweet. Up she goes. -y. Now you guys see why I wanted to upgrade our shield before we got here, because we're already halfway down on durability. So, definitely helps to have that. Eddie. Wow, the tightrope is actually responding to my controls for once. How about that? I'm not turning on. Stupid monitor. Eddie, anyway, well, I'll figure that out eventually. I'm gonna guess we've been going for about 20 minutes now. <laughs> but this episode is a little longer, a little short. Uh, I do apologize. Anyway, new enemy! This is a Staldra. This is a snake monster from before the dawn of time. Three bone-plated heads and a thirst to cause pain keep it writhing even beyond death. My analysis shows that to defeat this uh, this cursed snake, all three of its heads must be simultaneously destroyed. And another thing is if you do it on the first try, or not on the first try, but if you do it right when they strike, come on, come on. Come on. Uh, you can get hit by them. Man, this is not working very well. And first death. Luckily, we have a fairy. <laughs> All righty, let's try this again, shall we? Dang it, wrong button. Booyah! Yeah, we struggle with a little bit of that. If you, uh, I don't know if it's based on a certain time or if it's based on the first attack, but if you uh, if you fight it in one of those and you defeat it in one of those, you get a red ruby out of them. So they can be a pretty good enemy to uh, to grind with. Uh, that I think that's everything for this room. Yeah, it is. There shouldn't be anything else. So let's keep moving forward. Fortunately, without we're without our fairy, which is uh, unfortunate to say the least. Um, yeah. No kidding, considering I just said it was. It's fine. Alrighty. Here we go. And you're dead now. Ha 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 ha. Okay. Alrighty, nothing over here. We're just going around, so we'll just go ahead and. I think we'll just do this. Because here's another thing about the beetle if it's over an abyss. Sorry, hang on. If an enemy is over an abyss, like the Sculptula is. Well, gone forever. <laughs> Alrighty, let's go. And we are now on the other side. We got two chests left to go, and one of them is a is necessary, and that's the one that's hanging out right over there. 
but because we're going for 100% completion, that does mean getting every chest and every dungeon. So let's go ahead and create ourselves a shortcut back to the lo uh, back to the hub of the uh, Skyview Temple. Why is the shortcut important? Well, we'll find out later. <laughs> Alrighty. Well, where to go now? Well, let's take a look here. First off, we've got this guy over here, so don't forget that this exists. Second, here we go. Let's go ahead and bait our uh, our friend over here. That's oh, not really baiting so much as uh, it's terrifying onto the platform, which is great because now we can do this. Wow. And think you would explode. <laughs> All right, so this is what it looks like to uh, uh, to sprint across the tight ropes. Simple as that. All right, let's go ahead and get this extra chest over here, red rupee, and now we just have one final chest to get. And you guessed it, it's the boss key. So where do we go from here? Well, what we got to do first is we got to climb up here. Why, you may ask? Well, this temple is very old and abandoned. So what are we supposed to do? We're going to Tarzan it. <laughs> yeah, get used to these, uh, uh, to these, uh, these rope swings in the, uh, in the first area of the game here, because they are, uh, if you haven't gotten used to them already, at least, because they are all over the place. Uh, it's kind of the main gimmick of the uh, of Faron Woods and Deep Woods and all those and all those things. So here we go. We'll go ahead and activate that one, and we'll activate that one. Ooh yeah. Hoopy. All right, let's go ahead and stabilize. We'll go ahead and line ourselves up and start swinging. One more, and go. No. <laughs> All that setup. So wasted. Alrighty, here we go. Alrighty. Well, let's just go ahead and do this one. And go. Oh man, that was close. Alright. Ooh yeah, nice and easy. You got the golden carving! Yeah, the... I gotta stop saying the interesting thing. Uh, cause that's becoming like a lot of people's like. Uh, <laughs> alright, um... But what's unique about, uh, about this game with its boss keys is they are all... Uh, well, I guess you'll see here in a second. Uh, all you really gotta know is that they're, uh... Well, let's just say, uh... You either love them or you don't. Do, 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 do. Spoke too soon with the uh, with the tight ropes liking me, because apparently I'm just gonna keep fighting them. Sorry for the random cut there. I finally got the uh, the other monitor going. Uh, so we are gonna be taking on the boss next. So let's go ahead. And let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and let's go ahead. I'm saving. <laughs> Alrighty. So this is what I meant by they're uh, they're unique in this game. They are three dimensional puzzles. And unfortunately, Phi really wants us to listen to her. When you know that it, when it's ready to be solved and everything, all you do is you basically uh, you position it. Uh, and you can rotate it by moving your Joy-Con. Uh, as far as uh, keeping it steady goes, that's why you want to release it. But if you release it uh, in that grab, it'll just stay here. Now, it'll start glowing when uh, when you've essentially uh, you've solved it. So let's go ahead and insert the key. Let's open up this door.
Look who it is. I thought that tornado I stirred up would have tossed and torn you apart. Yet here you are, not in pieces. Not that your life or death has any consequence. It's just the girl that matters now. And I can sense her here, just beyond this door. Yes, we plucked her majesty from her perch in the clouds, and now she's ours. Oh, but listen to me. I'm being positively uncivil. Allow me to introduce myself. I am the demon lord who presides over, the, over this land you look down upon. This world you call the surface. You may call me Girahan. In truth, I very much prefer to be indulged with my full title, Lord Girahan. But I'm not fussy. <laughs> Did you really just draw your sword? Foolish boy. <laughs> By all rights, the girl should have fallen into her hands already. She was nearly ours when that loathsome servant of the goddess snatched her away. Do you have any idea how that made me feel inside? <laughs> Furious! Outraged! <laughs> sick with anger! This turn of events has left me with a strong ap appetite for bloodshed. <laughs> Still, it hardly seems fair, being of my position to take all of my anger out on you. Which is why I promise up front not to murder you. No, I'll just beat you within an inch of your life. <laughs> Demon Lord, Girahim. Target locked, Girahim. I have no confirmation, in, uh, confirmed information about this man other than he refers to himself as Demon Lord. I sense a powerful and evil aura and I estimate his level of ability as highly adept. However, according to analysis, he has yet to reveal his true power. Speech analysis indicates absolute confidence in his own abilities. Master, you must watch for Girahim's ability to grasp your sword with his bare right hand. It is highly probable that he observes the angle you hold your sword at and prepares his defense accordingly. I recommend attacking from the direction opposite his hand. This is all the information I have at the present time. When I have more information to report, Master, your sword will flash. You can always press down to call on me. Furthermore, when you require information that, about your equipped or uh, your equipment or your surroundings, please select Analysis. Alrighty, so Demon Lord Girahim, he very much, very much actually deserves the title Demon Lord with how evil he actually is, and a very, very good, very, very good antagonist for this. So let's go. Well, so we can't attack him with the Skyward Slash right off the bat. It is going to be uh, based on our angle. So what we want to do is we want to go up to him without. Him. And that's what happens if he catches you. Now, unfortunately, you'd think if we just back him up into a corner, he'd be good. But he just vanishes out of existence. And he goes right back to the center of the room. So he is going to watch your angle of the sword. So your goal is you want to catch him off guard. The only way to really do that is to attack him in the ways that he's not. So you got to move a little faster than him. But unfortunately, he's going to gain more adept at uh, figuring out where you're going to go next. So you got to be very, very fast with him. Or you can just go until he stops moving uh, his hand with it. Like so. Which is arguably a little bit easier of a way of fighting your hand. Alrighty, end of phase one. Now, he has his sword. Basically, when he charges you like that, you want to shield bash him. Shield bashing is your best friend with this fight. Uh, that's all I can really say about that. Eight. 
and that's what it looks like when he gets the drop on you. Maybe we can get the drop on him, however. And it looks like we're starting to read his attack pattern just as he was reading ours. Okay, we gotta be very, very careful here. We're actually gonna retreat a little bit because we need to drink our restoration potion. Oh, that was close. And here he comes. Okay, come on, come on, come on. Boom. And that's the end. Well, you put up more of a fight than I would have thought possible out of such a soft boy. But don't clap, your, clap for yourself quite yet. That sword of yours is the only reason you're still alive. I, sp I fear I've spent far too long teasing and toying with you. The girl's presence is all but faded from this place, which means there's no reason to linger here. Goodbye, Sky Child. Run and play this time. Get in my way again, though. And you're dead. <laughs> As you might have guessed, this will not be the last time we see him. But as a reward for completing the dungeon, and every dungeon in this game, we get ourselves a heart container. You got a heart container. Your life has been increased by one and is now fully replenished. We are up to seven hearts now. Let's move. Also, if you're curious about these pots across the room, they essentially just have, uh... Well, they don't have anything in them because they normally would have hearts. But this is hero mode, after all. So, they're just for decoration. Welcome to the Skyview Sprint. Now, a couple of things we want to do here before, obviously, we got a Skyward Slash that. One of the big ones is if you were, if you saw it out of the corner of your eye, if we use our beetle and we move it up, we go up to the top of these pillars, there's a red ruby waiting for us. Easy money. Secondly, if you were damaged at all, I. Uh, after that fight, this uh, spring here would actually heal you, which is kind of cool. Now, next, what we want to do, we actually want to grab this butterfly here. If I can, if I can grab him, <laughs> nah, that's fine. All right, we'll just go for the fairy instead. And right, we'll just keep one. We'll keep one free bottle. And behind the goddess statue here, there is another goddess cube. -na 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 -na. Alrighty, well these butterflies are pretty important. Let's see if we can let's let's go for one more try here. Let's see if we can get ourselves one of these. Booyah! You've got one blessed butterfly. These insects are commonly found in every province. In rare cases, you can find them flying in strange locations. That is a hint for later. But remember to keep that in mind. Alrighty. I've spent a long, uh, enough time uh, dilly-dallying. Let's go ahead and activate the crypts.
Master, I have a message written in the language of the gods of old. Allow me to translate for you. From the edge of time, I guide you, the chosen one to carry out the goddess's mission. The spirit maiden who descended from the clouds must travel to two sacred places to purify her body. You stand in one of these places, Skyview Spring. The other is known as the Earth Spring. This second spring is hidden away deep within the scorched earth of Elden. The spirit maiden, ever mindful of the heavy task entrusted to her, has set out for the second sacred place, for this second sacred place. You got the ruby tablet. The weathered surface of this heavy stone tablet feels very old. Master, as I just translated, it would appear that Zelda purified herself in the, sp in the waters of the spring. I calculated a 97% ch chance that she has already set up for Elden, where another great spring exists. However, it is not clear what method of travel Zelda used to move from here to her next destination. My analysis suggests you should take the tablet to the altar in Skyloft. Doing so will likely open a new column of light on the surface, allowing you to descend to another area and continue your search for Zelda. The bird statue that transports you back to the sky should be in the forest you previously passed through. Well, there you have it. Hey, it's me, Quee. Did you find the girl? Not yet. Oh, that's too bad. But it sounds like you at least know where you need to search next to find her, Quee. That's something, right? I'm so glad I've finally been reunited with all my Kiwi friends. It's all thanks to you, Kweep. With any luck, hopefully you'll find that girl you've been searching for real soon, Koroku. Take care, okay? Alrighty. Well, with uh, with Machi's optimism, I think that's a good place to end off this episode here. Uh, hopefully you guys liked this little bit of a longer episode. I figured we'd go ahead and finish up the Skyview Temple. So thank you for uh, for joining me. And in the next one, well, we're going to do exactly what Fi said. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to open up that next column of light into the land of Elden. Uh, and, uh, well, we might make a, make a couple of pit stops on the way around. Anyway, without further ado, thank you guys for watching. And I will catch you in the next one. Excuses.